Under Dan Snyder, the Washington Redskins have gone 142, 193-1 over 21 years. The struggles go far beyond the field, though, as the franchise has dealt with misconduct off the field. On Thursday, a Washington Post article was released that included 15 former female employees alleging sexual misconduct. Snyder has had an awful tenure in Washington, and we're going to take a look at the most recent scandal and his convincing case as the worst owner in the NFL. Before we get into Dan and Snyder, I'd like to acknowledge that the majority of our viewers aren't subscribed to the channel. Darren and I are both college students and hope to one day make this our full-time job. So please, if you do enjoy, consider subscribing and helping our journey here on YouTube. Thank you and enjoy the video. For starters, we're going to take a deeper look into the recent sexual misconduct scandal that was released on Thursday by the Washington Post. The article will be linked down in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. The scandal has allegations from 2006 to 2019 and has a number of front office staffers front and center, one of which is Larry Michael, the senior vice president of content and voice of the Redskins for 16 years. He retired on Wednesday. No, that timing is not a coincidence. Director player of personnel Alex Santos and assistant director of personnel Richard Mann were both announced fired on Sunday. Again, the timing wasn't a mistake. The other allegations were made against Dennis Green, the former president of business operations, who hasn't been with the franchise since 2018, due to a different scandal. Lastly, we have the former chief operating officer, Mitch Gershom, who hasn't worked for the Redskins since 2015. Michael would often comment on staff appearances and would make derogatory comments to colleagues. He was recorded in 2018, making a statement about an intern at practice. The women in the article detail frequent sexual harassment and verbal abuse. The story is separated into multiple parts, two of which include unwelcome advances and volatile environment. One of the many examples of unwelcome welcome advances was a staircase near the team headquarters that was transparent at the top, allowing someone from below to look up the skirt of a woman, something a former staffer said was something women tried to avoid. In August at Redskins training camp, there was reportedly a lot of improper activity, with one staffer saying she was propositioned every day. This included staff disclosing room numbers and offering late night visitations over text. This behavior was normal during the scouting combine as well. Another example of unwanted advances occurred to a Redskins beat reporter when Santa a married man, made advances and comments on her appearance, and even asked if she would date him if the two were single. Another issue with Santos and a former beat recorder came to light after, revealing that Santos had met up with her when she was leaving Redskins Park and would comment on her appearance. More allegations on Santos include him telling a staffer he wanted to kiss her in the break room, and another of him commenting on somebody's appearance in a sexual manner. Man was also involved in a number of unwanted advances, some of which were documented in text messages that appear in the story. He he reportedly joked about getting an inappropriate hug and informed a staffer that he and other members of the staff had wondered if her breasts were real. Gershman, known for his rage, was head and center in the volatile environment portion of the report, often commenting on staffers' bodies along with harsh insults about her job performance. He would also encourage her to wear sexually pleasing clothing for events with clients. Green would also reportedly comment on her appearance. Snyder would reportedly make fun of Green for being a cheerleader in college as well. The Redskins apparently only had a single person working on human resources, making it seemingly impossible to report any violations. The story notes that former general manager Bruce Allen likely knew about the misconduct due to his proximity. Snyder has hired attorney Beth Wilkinson to review the franchise's protocols. Wilkinson has worked on prominent cases like those that have involved Supreme Court Justice Brett Kavanaugh and former National Security Advisor Michael Flynn. It is worth noting that Snyder is not accused of any misconduct, but the report is an indictment on the toxic culture he has created. This isn't even close to the first time we've heard of a poor environment at Redskins Park. Former general manager Scott McLuhan was fired back in 2017 due to his ongoing issues with alcoholism, the same thing that led to his firings previously from the Seahawks and 49ers. It was said to be a disaster and he has had multiple alcohol relapses. One of the biggest scandals during Snyder's time as the owner was revealed in 2018, but occurred in 2013. A New York Times investigation found that the team took their cheerleaders to Costa Rica for a shoot and took their passports after arrival. Some cheerleaders said that they were required to be topless and some only wore body paint. The Redskins had spectators at the event and some were sponsors and given up close access. Additionally, nine of the cheerleaders were used as personal escorts at the nightclub, being used as sex symbols to get sponsors. Snyder has been the owner since purchasing the franchise back in May of 1999. The reality is he has been a dysfunctional owner and has been exposed as an organization of misconduct multiple times over the last decade. On the field, things haven't been good either and he has been 
been in charge for a whopping two playoff wins. I'm about to start my junior year of college, and the Redskins haven't won a playoff game since I was six. That year, Sean Alexander was NFL MVP, and Aaron Rodgers was a rookie, to give some context. The Redskins scandal and issues all hits a little deeper for me as a lifelong fan. I also work for a newspaper here in Virginia and have been able to cover events like Redskins training camp back in August when I worked hand in hand with these people every day. The whole situation is disappointing in every manner, and it's clear that Snyder either needs to take responsibility for what was happening under his watch or get out. The on the field disappointments have been par for the course, but the extra things in the horrible culture surrounding the Redskins is a terrible situation. Snyder certainly has his name in the hat for the worst owner in the NFL. I'd personally say it's neck and neck between him and Dean Spanos over in LA. There have been movements as long as I can remember to try and get Snyder to sell the team. And now it sounds like the franchise minority owners want the same and are pushing to sell their own shares if he doesn't. As a lifelong fan, Dan, sell the team.